Well, hi there, folks. I'm Robert Reeves, and welcome to my presentation. Uh, so happy to be invited to Percona Live Virtual. Uh, we're going to be talking about liquid based data today, version control and collaboration for your database. Um, Got to tell you, never thought I'd be saying those words, right? Uh, version control and collaboration for a database. What's that all about? Well, before we get started, hi, I'm Robert. Um, I'm CTO and co-founder of Liquibase. Liquibase is open source software that helps you migrate database changes throughout that app lifecycle from dev to test to staging to production. We can help update that database alongside the application. Um, I'm a big fan of comic books. So uh, we're gonna be having Q and A afterwards. And so happy to answer questions about liquid based data. But if you would like my thoughts on anything dealing with comic books, um, you got any questions, let me know. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Robert Reeves, uh, GitHub R2 Liquibase, and certainly via email R2 at liquibase.com. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about how we got into this need for versioning and collaboration with databases. Um, and it all goes back to the Dewey days of 1979. A lot of stuff was happening that year. Um, look, I gotta tell you, this guy never put out a bad album, but for my money, this is the best. Um, really, really good. Um, we also had, uh, you know, this uh, new cinema, uh, you know, Kramer versus Kramer, a movie about divorce. Oh my goodness. Uh, scandalous. Um, some of you might have had a Walkman. Some of you might remember this from Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, that came out in 79. Um, but also the first version of Oracle was released. Um, and wow, look at those colors. That's something else. Um, and so, you know, prior to this, prior to a database, if you wanted to answer a simple question like, oh gosh, what are the top 10 customers that my company has in the greater tri-state area by revenue, uh, you would have to get an enormous room, a bunch of files, uh, maybe some chalkboards, um, and you would be wrong. It would take days and days and days to figure out that information. With the database, we can figure out in seconds, less than seconds. Um, but not a lot has changed since then. I mean, really, let, let's think about this. I mean, Oracle ran on a VAX machine. Um, it had tables, it had columns, rows, indices. Um, you know, you ex, you know, you change that structure with a .sql file. Um, you queried. <laughs> you know, from a command line. Um, I got to tell you, I don't see a lot of improvement. I mean, oh gosh, it's running in the cloud now. Um, well, you know, great. It's running on somebody else's server somewhere else. You know, the amount of advancements that we've seen on the application side of the house compared to what we've seen on the database side of the house, it, it well, it, it's a big difference. And I think, um, you know, as an industry, um, I think we should feel a little shame about that. I mean, let's think about this. We've got a whole host of people over in application development, continuous delivery, cloud native, Kubernetes. Uh, they're doing all sorts of great things. And uh, progressive delivery with feature flags, um, that's amazing. It's increasing the rate of change. Uh, for application, it's increasing the number of changes and it's increasing satisfaction to our customers. Where's that for the database? I mean, seriously, we've got a whole bunch of people on one side of the house that are really enjoying life. And then our database professionals, frankly, uh, not so much. And I think it's time to change that. And so the folks at Liquibase, we looked at this and we said, hey, we could do better. We've got to figure out a better way um, and along the way, we found out a way to improve that experience of versioning and collaborating with databases. And that's what liquid based data is. At the end of the day, we're going to take a database and version not just the schema, which is what Liquibase does, but also the data itself. Wow, that's pretty cool. And also allow you to collaborate, to be able to share those changes with your team members. 
What we did was we modeled Git, uh, the same workflow that developers are using today with Git load, with Git, um, uh, Git commit, Git push, Git pull, Git clone, these sorts of things. You can do the same thing with liquid based data. And, you know, the reason why at the end of the day, we decided to do that is because we saw that dev process for databases as arduous, uh, tedious, overwhelming. Um, we also believe that developers should be able to share changes with their database as easily as they share changes with their application code. Um, so that sounds neat. How about we see it? So uh, we're going to go ahead and have a demo here. Um, and I am going to go to the handy dandy command line here, make sure that's up and running. Um, but I wanted to show you this. We are obviously based on liquibase here. And so I wanted to show you my liquibase.properties file. Um, now for liquibase users, for veterans, um, you're, this is going to be familiar. You might notice that uh, there is a new uh, key value pair here, uh, repository. Uh, we are versioning. So we do have a repository in liquid-based data. But this lays out that we're using Postgres, uh, username and password. And I prefer to use XML for my change log with liquid-based. You can use YAML, JSON, formatted SQL, doesn't really matter. Um, and personal preference. Um, but, you know, let's go ahead and start this up. And liquid based data requires Docker desktop, and that's what it's going to be using to run the database. We leverage container technology to do this. And so if I go ahead and start my kind of baseline first version database here, you're going to notice this looks a lot like Docker. Um, liquid based data run. Um, this is the first and last time I'm going to be calling out the repository because I put it in my change log. Um, I'm sorry, my liquid based properties file. We have this environment variable that Postgres requires, uh, or rather, uh, is really handy. Uh, and then we just say Postgres. Now I'm using Postgres today, but you can do this with any database that will run in Docker that has a volume mount for the data. That's it. Uh, later, I'm going to show you some links to see Mongo, Oracle, SQL Server. Um, I would very much like to be challenged to see if you could find a database that this does not work with. We would like to hear that. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. And what this is going to do is two things. One, it's going to start uh, the Postgres Docker container. Uh, but it's also going to create a repository. It's going to say, hey, okay, my repo is where we are going to steer, st store versions of this data. And so if we do liquibase data ls, we can go ahead and see that we have uh, one repository there, my repo. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, so let's go ahead and take a peek at this in um, a database ID. We're going to use dBeaver, but I want to show you that it is empty. Uh, it has, you know, it's going to have that new database smell. Um, and here we go, schemas. Come on, there we go, tables. Ah, nothing in tables. Okay this would be a good time to do your first commit. So we'll go back to the command prompt and I am going to, and if you're wondering why I keep looking to the left, that's where I have all my commands, make it a little bit easier. Um, and so liquid based data commit, first commit, yay, we did it. And now we are, we can go ahead and just like with, you know, get log, we can do liquid based data log. And we're going to see one commit there. Great, as expected. Um, now, let's start making some changes to this database. Um, now, a lot of different ways of doing this, but I think the best way is with Liquibase. And so I'm going to use Liquibase. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and copy the whole command here. And we'll move that up to the screen so you can see it. 
And we're going to do, um, we're going to generate a change log. Instead of me having to write all of the XML, I'm going to have Liquibase do it for me. Um, and so now I've got this changelog.xml file created. I'm going to open it up in Notepad. You can open it up in whatever you would like. And so we'll see that we just have database change log there. It is an empty um, schema. And so what we're going to do now is add a change. Database change log, nope. Much better. And luckily I have a change log over here that I can copy and paste. Real simple, no big deal. We're just going to add a single table. Now, of course, if I had created this table in, um, you know, using DBeaver or something like that, or uh, created it manually, um, you know, writing SQL myself, uh, generate change log would have picked it up. Um, and so, as you can see, you know, just customer table, a few columns here, no big deal. Four. Uh, now that that is saved, we can go over here and do Liquibase. Now, what Liquibase is going to do here is look at the change log, look at the database, say, okay, there's one change log, a change set in this change log. Uh, well, it doesn't appear that it's over on the database. I'm going to run it. Um, if you had five change sets, and Liquibase looked at the database and said, oh, I only see two there, it will run three. Um, if it sees five and five, it doesn't do anything. That's how Liquibase works. And so update was executed successfully. So let's look at dBeaver here. And uh, I would expect to see some changes in tables. Yes, there is my customer table. And here are the two meta tables that uh, Liquibase creates for us. This is how it keeps track of it. This is database change log keeps the history and database change log lock makes sure that uh, two people aren't using Liquibase at the same time. Um, great, now that I've made my change, this is probably a good time to do another commit. And same thing as before, um, we have Liquibase data commit, we have a message. Uh, and there we go. And if I do Liquibase data log, uh, it's going to show me two commits now, as expected. Now, what is the point of versioning if you can't go back to safety? So imagine I really messed up my database. Maybe I made a bunch of changes to it, but I didn't commit. Uh, or if I did commit, that's fine. But I want to roll back. I want to get back to that last state. And so that's pretty easy. Uh, we would use, you know, in Git, you would do Git checkout um, and give it some information. Here, we're going to do Liquibase data checkout, and we're going to give it the first commit that we did. Uh, remember, this was the um, empty schema. So if we go back to dBeaver, we're going to see that there are no tables there, right? I would hope so. Uh, we'll go over here. We'll hit refresh, and now they're gone. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, on second thought, maybe I did like that table. So if I want to go back, all I have to do, and I'll do uh, get this to the top of the screen so you can see a little bit better. We'll do Liquibase data log. And there is that commit that I want to get. Uh, and we'll delete the old one. We'll do the new one. So I'm rolling forward this time. Uh, and I would expect to see that um, I have my tables there. And there we go. Outstanding. So, you know, there's a lot of work that we put into this. Um, and there is still more features and functionality available. Um, so to get access to liquid-based data, um, 
go to our GitHub repository and you can download it there. Uh, there is a tutorial that will walk you through it. Um, and certainly if you'd like to talk with us, uh, if you have any problems, you could join us on Discord here at this link. And, and I'll be distributing this presentation as a PDF so you can click on those links. Um, and then we also have some demo videos here, uh, certainly Postgres, uh, one that I just did, but Oracle, SQL Server, MongoDB. Um, and we also have, uh, you know, showing off um, how we work with multiple de developers. I mean, what would be the point of versioning if you could not share this with other folks? And so we show in this video how to do, um, uh, uh, using remotes with liquid base data, how to share those data sets back and forth. Thank you very much. And let's go ahead and open it for questions.